In 2021, Airbus ended production of the world's largest passenger aircraft. Four years later, the same aircraft returned to boardroom discussions at the highest levels of global aviation. But just recently, one airline openly pushed for its revival, while Boeing's largest widebody program remained delayed. That aircraft is the Airbus A380, and its potential return is tied to shifting market pressure and stalled alternatives. The push for an A380 comeback is led by Emirates. The airline operates more than 100 A380 aircraft, more than all other airlines combined. While most carriers retired the type, Emirates expanded its use. Emirates President Tim Clark has publicly confirmed that he has repeatedly urged Airbus to study a re-engineered A380, commonly referred to as A380neo. Clark stated that the airline has provided Airbus with detailed proposals outlining how a new version could be built and operated more efficiently. Clark stated that Airbus estimated a redevelopment cost of approximately $20 billion. He responded that Emirates would commit to purchasing the aircraft if Airbus agreed to build it. This exchange placed the A380 back into strategic discussion despite Airbus having dismantled the production line after the final delivery in 2021. The original A380 entered service in 2007. It was designed for hub-to-hub -hub traffic with very high passenger volumes. The aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of about 1.2 million pounds and a wingspan of nearly 80 meters. It uses four engines and requires specialized airport infrastructure. These factors limited its adoption as the aviation industry shifted toward twin-engine aircraft with lower operating risk and greater route flexibility. Technological conditions have changed since the A380 was designed. Modern wide-body aircraft rely heavily on composite materials. The Airbus A350 and Boeing 787 use composite structures for roughly half of their airframes. These materials reduce weight, improve fatigue resistance, and lower maintenance requirements. The original A380 used composites in limited areas, with most of its structure built from aluminum alloys. Clark has stated that a redesigned A380 would use significantly more composite material. Proposed changes include a smaller vertical stabilizer, revised wing geometry, improved aerodynamics, and potential folding wingtips to increase airport compatibility. These changes aim to reduce drag and overall weight. The engine is the central factor. The original A380 is powered by Rolls-Royce Trent 900, or Engine Alliance GP 7000 engines, both designed using 1990s technology. Clark has pointed to the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan program as the basis for a new A380 engine option. The Ultrafan demonstrator completed ground testing in 2023, producing thrust above 87,000 pounds. It uses geared turbofan architecture, composite fan blades, advanced heat-resistant materials, and variable pitch fan systems. It is designed to operate on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. Clark stated that an A380 equipped with next-generation engines could reduce fuel consumption by 20 to 25% compared with current models. Combined with airframe changes, this would significantly alter operating economics. The objective is to narrow the efficiency gap between four-engine and twin-engine aircraft on a per-seat basis. Emirates has demonstrated that the A380 can be economically viable under specific conditions. In 2023, the airline operated more than 100 A380 flights per day across six continents. Its two-class configuration carries up to 615 passengers. High load factors allow competitive seat mile costs. Emirates has invested heavily in A380-specific infrastructure, including maintenance facilities, simulators, spare parts inventories, and and airport gates. The passenger cabin remains a differentiator. The A380 offers more than 550 cubic meters of cabin volume, more than any other commercial aircraft. Emirates uses this space for premium features, including onboard lounges and shower facilities. 
The aircraft also allows wider seats and quieter cabins due to its size and altitude performance. Emirates reported that premium economy cabins on A380 aircraft have achieved high load factors and strong revenue performance. The market environment is also changing. Many major airports are slot constrained. Heathrow, JFK, Tokyo Narita, and other hubs cannot add additional movements. Capacity growth at these airports depends on larger aircraft rather than more flights. On high-density routes, larger aircraft reduce congestion while maintaining passenger volumes. Environmental policy is another factor. Aviation emissions targets focus on per-seat efficiency rather than aircraft size alone. A fully loaded large aircraft with lower fuel burn per passenger can achieve emissions comparable to smaller aircraft. The ultrafan engine is designed to support future emission standards and sustainable fuel use. The challenges remain substantial. Restarting A380 production would require rebuilding supply chains, recertifying the aircraft under current regulations, redeveloping software systems, and reallocating engineering resources. Airbus has stated that these factors make a launch decision difficult without multiple committed customers. At the same time, Boeing's 777X program remains delayed. The aircraft has not entered service. Certification timelines have shifted repeatedly. Airlines awaiting deliveries have adjusted fleet plans. This delay has reopened discussion around large capacity alternatives that are already proven in service. As of now, the A380neo remains a proposal rather than a program. No launch has been announced yet, but this is highly possible. For now, what has changed is that the aircraft is no longer dismissed as obsolete. It has re-entered strategic discussion due to airline demand, airport constraints, and stalled alternatives in the very large aircraft segment. The story around Boeing has shifted sharply, and the market reaction has caught nearly everyone off guard. Boeing entered 2025 under pressure, as its stock was down from earlier peaks, production faced limits, and airline customers tracked every delay. But just yesterday, Boeing shares rose sharply after JP Morgan raised its target price. The move pushed the Dow higher and signaled renewed interest. The shift came as analysts focused on rising aircraft deliveries and one of the largest backlogs in aviation. The upgrade by JP Morgan contributed to a more than 3% rally in Boeing stock, which helped drive gains in the Dow Jones Industrial Average on that trading day. Boeing's share price climb made it one of the strongest performers among the Dow's 30 constituent stocks on December 19th, with the rise accounting for a meaningful portion of the index's overall point gain. Market participants have been watching Boeing's stock closely after a period of regulatory challenges and production setbacks earlier in the year. The company had faced hurdles related to production volumes and certification timelines, but recent commentary from analysts pointed to improving fundamentals, especially as Boeing works to boost its delivery rates of key aircraft models. Investors also focused on Boeing's backlog of nearly 5,900 aircraft, which underpins future revenue and supports the view that aviation demand remains strong. The large order book reflects multi-year commitments from airlines for new airplanes, a factor that many analysts consider a central element of Boeing's recovery narrative and a contributor to investor confidence. JP Morgan's revised target price and the subsequent stock reaction occurred against a backdrop of broader aerospace sector momentum. Industry analysts cited aging global fleets and sustained airline demand for modern jetliners as conditions that favor increased deliveries in the near term, which in turn provides revenue visibility for manufacturers like Boeing. Boeing has been working to overcome previous production slowdowns, particularly in its 737 MAX and 787 Dreamliner programs. Delivery rates had lagged earlier in the year, but statements from Boeing's leadership and financial officers indicated expectations for acceleration in 2026, which contributed to renewed investor focus on the company's operational outlook. Analyst commentary from December also noted ongoing regulatory developments, including reviews tied to the 737 MAX 10 cockpit alerting system by the Federal Aviation Administration and other certification milestones. While these regulatory elements remained part of the investment narrative, they also underscored the interplay between operational progress and stock performance as market participants priced in future delivery potential. The positive stock movement on December 19th was not isolated. Boeing stock had already climbed about 25% in 2025 after trading significantly lower earlier in the year. 
Despite trading below its July highs, the stock has shown signs of recovery from previous lows, driven by a combination of production news, delivery expectations and market sentiment. Investor focus on deliveries intensified earlier in the month when Boeing's finance leadership publicly projected higher jet deliveries for its 737 and 787 models in 2026, a development that had previously lifted shares in early December. Comments from finance executives at industry conferences highlighted plans for increased output and certification progress, which helped shift investor expectations towards stronger performance. In comparing Boeing's performance to that of rival Airbus, market data in December showed that Airbus had cut its full-year delivery forecast by about 30 aircraft for 2025, reflecting challenges in supply and production for Airbus as well. The Airbus delivery adjustment occurred while Boeing's delivery expectations improved, creating a divergent tone for the two largest aircraft manufacturers. The JP Morgan upgrade cited both production capacity improvements and broader aerospace industry demand trends as reasons for raising its target on Boeing stock. The firm included Boeing as a top pick within its aerospace and defense coverage, reflecting relative strength in projected deliveries and the company's large backlog. While some investors noted Boeing stock still remained below peak levels earlier in the year, the recent performance reflected an uptick in trading interest. Market metrics showed that Boeing stock had broken a key trend line and offered what some traders saw as a potential buying opportunity, particularly in light of analyst optimism around future deliveries and sector demand. The surge in Boeing's share price also coincided with a broader industry pattern of aerospace stocks reacting to changes in production outlooks and delivery forecasts. Analysts observing the performance of Boeing versus peers pointed to the relationship between airline demand for new aircraft and stock valuations in the sector. The volume of airline commitments and delivery schedule improvements are central data points in assessing future revenue streams for aircraft producers. In early 2016, something went wrong inside a plane engine and the damage spread faster than anyone expected. Flights were cancelled. Aircraft sat on the ground across Europe, Asia and the Pacific. Airlines lost money every day and some even stopped trusting planes they had just bought. Boeing did not build the engine but Boeing's Dreamliner took the hit. Orders changed and customers started looking elsewhere. What began as a technical problem slowly turned into a business crisis that Boeing could not ignore. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner entered service in October 2011 with two engine options, General Electric's Gen X and Rolls-Royce's Trent 1000. Both engines were certified and marketed as next-generation power plants designed for long-range efficiency. Early operational data appeared stable. Dispatch reliability was reported near 99.9%. That figure collapsed in early 2016 when corrosion-related fatigue cracking was discovered in the intermediate pressure turbine blades of Trent 1000 engines operated by all Nippon Airways. Aircraft were immediately withdrawn from service, forcing flight cancellations and emergency inspections. The root cause involved a design flaw in turbine blade materials interacting with specific environmental conditions. The issue was not isolated, by mid-2016, similar findings appeared across global operators. Rolls-Royce was forced to ground up to 44 Boeing 787 aircraft at one point. Airlines experienced cascading operational failures as inspections